Okay, so we're simplifying radical expressions that contain square roots. And if you look here, I have the square root of 48. And as we know, 48 is not a perfect square. One of the most important things you're going to learn about dealing with roots is you should always have your list in front of you. So I wrote the first 12 perfect squares up here to show you 48 is not on this list. We cannot leave this expression as square root of 48 because all mathematical expressions have to be in lowest terms. And to reduce a radical expression, your job is to find the largest perfect square that's a factor of 48. The largest number on this list that divides into 48. Now, if you do third grade math, sure, there are a lot of factors of 48. If I just think about what multiplies the 48, it's 1 times 48, it's 2 times 24, it's 3 times 16, it's 4 times 12, it's not 5, it's 6 times 8, it's not 7, and we already got 8. These are all the factors of 48, but you just can't choose any one. The job is to find the factor that has the biggest perfect square because we eventually want a square root. So what I normally do is I look at my list of perfect squares. I know 48 is right here between 36 and 49, and I look and I start from the back. Which one of these perfect squares divides into 48? Well, I know 36 will not divide in evenly. I know 25 will not divide in evenly. 16 will divide in evenly. And that is your biggest perfect square. And that's what we're going to use. So we're going to rewrite 48 as 16 times 3. And you always want to put the perfect square number first. And the reason why is now we have a job here. This says the square root 16 and the square root 3. So I'm going to break that apart because that's what we're going to do to each value. Because we're connected by multiplication, we can do this. And then I'm going to answer it. What is the square root of 16? Well, I could do that operation. It's 4. Now, the question is, can I square root 3? Is there a number times itself that makes 3? No. The only way to make 3 is 1 and 3, and that's not the same number. So we cannot square root 3. 3 is not on a list. It's not a perfect square. So because we can't perform this operation, the 3 stays inside the radical symbol. And simplified, 48, the square root of 48 is 4 square roots 3. So the job is to find the greatest perfect square. All right, let's go to our next expression. 4 square roots 27. Now, here's our boo-boo. You guys are all going to see 4, and you're going to want to change it to a 2. Does it say to square root 4? No, it does not. 4 is a whole number. We're going to leave it alone. If we follow order of operations, we've got to work inside our grouping symbol. We've got to work with square root of 27. So if I look at my list here, 27 is not a perfect square. There is not a number times itself that makes 27. So we're going to have to find a perfect square in 27. So if I look, 27 is located right here on the list. We're trying to find a number that divides into 27. Will 25 divide into 27 evenly? No. Will 16 divide into 27 evenly? No. Will 9 divide into 27? Yes. That's your perfect square. So we're going to rewrite 27 as 9 times 3. Always put the perfect square number first. Again, this 4 in front we're going to bring down. We're going to rewrite this now as 2 square roots. This is the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. I can do this operation. I know what the square root of 9 is. So I'm going to leave my 4 in front. What is the square root of 9? That's the whole number 3. Now this 4 and 3 are side by side, so they're connected by multiplication. Here I have a square root of 3. Well, you just told me a minute ago, you cannot square root 3. 3 is not a perfect square. So because we can't do that operation, that number stays inside the radical symbol. Now we can't leave this. 4 times 3, whole numbers, that makes 12 square roots of 3. And that's your simplified form. The goal is to break down the root by finding the biggest perfect square as a factor. I, we have the square root of 72 over 16. Again, we have a fraction in here. Well, we understand that means the square root symbol belongs both to the numerator and to the denominator. 
Now, if you look very closely, 16 is on your list. 16 is a perfect square. So there's no work here. We know what is the square root of 16. What times itself the 16? Well, that's 4. So we're done with the denominator. The problem is 72. 72 is not on the perfect square list. 72 is located right here. We have to find the biggest perfect square in 72. Now I know what you're all thinking. It's 9. I know 9 times 8 is 72 from our multiplication tables. And that is correct. 9 is a perfect square that factors into 72. But it's not the biggest. And that's the goal, to find the biggest. If you look closely, 36 divides into 72. 36 times 2 is 72. So I'm going to write this as 36 times 2. I'm going to break this apart. I'm doing the square root of 36 times the square root of 2 over 4. We all know what is the square root of 36. Well, that's easy. That's a 6. It comes out because we did the operation. Can we square root 2? No. 2 is not a perfect square. 2 is prime. It's in lowest terms. So it cannot square root. We leave it in the symbol. And this is over 4. Now everybody look closely. Can this be the final answer? Think back to what you learned about fractions. All fractions have to be what? That's right, reduced. 6 and 4 have a common factor of 2. So if we divide 6 by 2, we get 3. If we divide 4 by 2, we get 2. Now you cannot divide this 2 by 2 because it's in a square root symbol. It is not a whole number. Both 6 and 4 are whole numbers. That's why we're dividing them by the common factor of 2. So this final expression is 3 square roots of 2 over 2. So the moral of the story is real simple. To simplify our radical expression, if we're dealing with square root, you find the biggest perfect square. Okay, see you in the next module.